costing and variance analysis. Let's proceed uh, to some terms muna. Standard cost, na mentioned ko na kagabi, but I'm not so sure if you have heard it uh, clearly. Standard cost, that is the number of inputs required para sa output natin, no? So, ang inputs na tinutukoy natin dyan, that would be how much materials, gano'ng karaming labor, oh, and overhead na kailangan natin to come up with our product. Okay? Minsan, na ipagpapalit yung term na standard sa budget. Kasi pareha sila na, pareha sila na uh, predetermined. So, at the start of the, the accounting period, nadedetermine na natin yung standard at budget. Pero ano ba yung pagkakamuka at pagkakaiba ng dalawa? Okay. Para sila nagiging guide natin in our operation. Pero, yung standard natin is more on per unit. Ang budget natin is more on total. Pero meron din naman tayong total standard cost. Pero anong difference nung dalawa? Kapag budget ang pinag-uusapan natin, ang tinatanong dyan sa exam, what did the company plan to incur? Budget yung pinag-uusapan doon. Pero kapag ang tanong sa exam ay what should the company incur? standard na po yung sagot natin doon. So, yun yung difference ng dalawa. Another thing is, ang budget natin is based on our plan. Kaya nga sabi natin during our discussion in management accounting concepts, ang plano natin, when converted into quantitative terms, we now call it budget. Kung maga, uh, may nilalagyan lang natin how much cost ba ang ma-incur natin with our actions, with our plans, and so on. That would be con uh, converted into budget. Now, ang budget natin, ginagamit din natin yung standard cost per unit pero multiply natin with our planned level of activity. Again, planned level of activity. Pero ang standard natin, ginagamit natin yung standard cost per unit natin Pero ang total standard cost ay multiply natin with the actual level of activity. Yun yung difference ng dalawa. Again, kapag budget na pinag-uusapan, ang total budget is based on the planned level of activity. Ang standard total standard cost natin is based on the actual level of activity. And that would be yung pares na yun, whether gumagamit ka ng standard costing system or hindi, yung standard cost at budget natin would be the guide of all the managers in their operations sa kanya-kanya nilang departments. Ibig sabihin, dapat lahat sila, mag, uh, uh, all their actions should be within the budget. Dapat yung sales, for example, for selling divisions, dapat yung sales nila ay pasok dun sa target ng company. Ayan. So that's standard cost. And this is what we call variance analysis. This is the time that we compare yung ating budget, yung ating standard na sinet at the start of the period with the actual during the period of evaluation. Ngayon, kapag may difference, we call it variance. We do not invest so much time with all the variances. Again, tulad ng napag-usapan natin noon, we only uh, investigate variance uh, that are variances that are material. Yung mga malilit na variances, hayaan mo na muna yan kasi sometimes the cost to investigate the variance would be much higher pa kumpara sa variance natin mismo. And in management advisory services or in management accounting, we do not just compute the variance. Kaya nga ito ay variance analysis. We analyze the variances. We do not just measure. We do not just compute. We analyze. We try to determine bakit nagkaroon ng variances. Para para nalaman natin kung bakit mag, nagkaroon ng difference yung plano natin with our actual. That's the time that we correct it the following period. So that's what we do in variance analysis. And to do that, dapat alam mo kung sino yung person responsible ng pagset ng standard. Para alam mo kung sino yung babalikan mo pag nagkaroon ng variance sa materials, sino ba in charge of, sa pagdating sa materials, sila yung mag -e explain kung bakit nagkaroon ng variances. Kasi ang gusto nga natin, yung standard natin, yun yung ma-achieve natin every time we operate. And ang isang company, nag -e employ ng standard cost system uh, kasi... Na, mabilis siya. There is theoretical efficiency. Paano naging mabilis? Kung 1,000 units ang in-order natin, kung naka-standard cost system tayo, automatically, you know, the, the standard cost, multiply mo lang with the number of units, immediately you can communicate with your uh, customer or buyer or client kung magkano yung magiging billing price natin sa kanila. Isa yung sa benefits ng standard cost system. Another would be, 
uh, performance evaluation. Kasama na, na rin doon that the managers and the employees are motivated. So in that way, they will really strive harder para ma-reach nila yung standard or yung budget. And performance evaluation, so that would be good for the company na na-evaluate mo, na monitor mo yung performances ng lahat ng empleyado, lahat ng departamento ng company, and so on. Okay? So, if you remember noon, meron tayong actual costing system wherein the materials, labor, and overhead, lahat yan naka-actual. Pero kapag normal costing system, actual ang materials, actual ang labor, pero pagdating sa overhead, predetermined na yung overhead natin. So, may isang variance tayo doon sa overhead lang. Pero sa standard cost system, may variance uh, ang materials, labor, at overhead natin para parehas na predetermined. So, ibig sabihin, we expect na yung actual na materials, labor, and overhead natin would be different from the standard. Kaya tatlo or even more yung variances na meron tayo. So, mas yun lang yung parang, uh, hindi naman talaga disadvantage, yun lang yung kapalit ng kaga na sobrang bilis na at effective ng standard cost system. However, matrabaho lang pagdating ng end of the period because you really have to evaluate, you really have to analyze the variances. Bakit hindi nare-reach yung target and so on. Okay, paano ba magsaset ng standards? Where do we get the standard cost? Yung iba, based on the activity itself. They analyze activity, kung ano talaga yung nature ng activity. Sa tingin nila, gano'ng karaming materials to, gano'ng karaming labor, gano'ng karaming overhead. Normally, ginagamit to ng mga companies na hindi pare-parehas yung, uh, yung products that, or services that they provide to their clients or customers. So, kada activity, kada production, kada uh, period, they they try to analyze or they try to measure or estimate two materials, labor, and overhead that they will target for that operation. So that's activity analysis. <clears throat> for the others, they are using historical data. So this is one of the uh, least expensive way of uh, setting the standard. Kasi normally, dapat ang company nag-operate na ng medyo matagal na. Kasi for the past five years, kunwari, ganito ang materials mo labor and overhead. So, ibig sabihin, most likely in the coming uh, period, inflation na lang ang i-consider mo na yung pagtaas sa mga bilihin and so on. So, ito yung magiging bago natin ang standard. Okay? So, dyan natin binubuo yung mga standard. Pero sino ba set ng standard? It's more on the management. Pero sino sa managers? Mamaya as we go on, malalaman natin sino managers ba ang set ng mga standards na yan. And because sila rin yung managers na babalikan natin just in case magkaroon nga ng variances. Another source is benchmarking, especially if your company is new. Tapos, gusto mo mag-set ng standard, ng, uh, gusto mo i-adapt ang standard cost system. So, you, you try to look at the, the other companies within the same industry. So, ano kaya standard cost nila? So, most likely, that would be your standard cost as well. And yung iba naman, target costing. So, major related yung benchmarking. But target costing is you are really considering yung uh, market prices. And then after the ma ma determining the market price, ano yung target cost mo given your desired level of income? So, maraming way, maraming sources of standard cost. So, it depends on the company, ano yung best na i-adapt nila na way of setting their standard cost. Okay. So, at this point, ito, nakalala nyo na yung term na to, pero ito kasi yung talagang gamit na gamit sa variance analysis. Management by exception. Hindi natin tinitingnan lahat, hindi natin kinukompare lahat ng actual sa plano. We only focus on the areas where there are problems or on yung mga areas na meron ng variances. And again, hindi po kaya may variance, investigate mo na. You will investigate kapag material or significant yung variances natin. But the question is, ang ini-investigate mo ba ay unfavorable variances lang? The answer is no. Because we investigate both um, favorable at saka mga unfavorable variances. Kasi minsan, hindi porket nakatipid ang isang department. Eh, at syempre, pag nakatipid, no, favorable to. Masasabi mo na na magaling yung manager. Hindi po ganun yun. 
ang sign na ang Sangmander ay magaling at sumusunod sa plano is kapag mas close sa target yung kanilang mga actual na na incur Kaya kung mamimili ka ng ipopromote mo na manager, if ever na time will come, you will be the boss, you will be the owner of the the company, ang pipiliin mong manager is yung the one na nag incur that is close to the budget. Pero yung mga nakakatipid lang basta, tingnan mo rin, for example, sa materials, nakakatipid kasi bumibili pala sila ng mga substandard na materials. O kaya, masyado silang nagko-cost cutting, binabawasan ng sweldo yung mga tao. So, sa, so, right now, favorable, pero later on, problema yan. Pwedeng mawalan ka ng mga empleyado, pwedeng mawalan ka ng mga customers because you are getting substandard materials. Again, we focus on areas where, uh, where there are problems. Ang problems, hindi lang nakikita sa unfavorable na viruses. It can also be uh, seen or it can also be parang uh, observed even in favorable na variances. Okay? Now, ito yung ginagawa natin sa variance analysis. Uh, ito, yung mga, ito yung cycle. Na at the start, siyempre, required na nag-undergo nag ka na na operation. We prepare the performance report. Ang performance report natin is more on actual versus your budget. And then after that, we analyze the variances. We determine alin dito ang mga uh, significant na variances, alin dito ang favorable at unfavorable. And after that, we start raising questions. Kanino tayo magtatanong? Kaya nga, inaalam natin sino ba yung person or department responsible dun sa pag-execute ng specific na na item na yun sa report natin. Kung materials yan, sino ba ang dapat natin kausapin? And after that, we try to identify the root causes. And para pag nalaman mo na yung root causes, that's the only time that you can really make uh, corrective actions sa mga naging pagkakamali or pagkukulang in that particular na, na operating period. And after that, you will conduct another operations. And after that, you will again perform or prepare performance report and then you do the same. Paulit-ulit pong ginagawa ito sa company hanggang sa uh, hanggang sa later on makita natin that we are really doing our plan. Pero time will come na halos wala ng variances or makikita natin may consistently mga malayo sa standard. Maybe that's the time that we revisit our standard na baka naman they are performing well, pero yung standard natin is too strict. And let me just tell you about the standard. Meron kasi tayong tinatawag na ideal at saka uh, practical standard. Ang ginagamit po ng company should be the practical standard. Kasi ang ideal standard, 100% po ang ine-expect nyan sa atin. Ibig sabihin, walang errors, walang losses. Pero ang practical standard, it considers... Uh, or it includes allowance for some spoilage, allowance for some imperfections. Halimbawa, kayo sa B-man rev. Para po masa, hindi naman namin kayo hinihinga ng 100% na performance. I mean, na wala talagang mali. Pero ideally, that's uh, what we aim for. Yung talagang ma-perfect or maintindihan natin lahat-lahat. Pero definitely, for us to pass B-man rev, we are... Uh, setting some allowance for uh, syempre, hindi natin alam during exam, nalito, or whatever na nangyari sa atin kaya nga may allowance sa 40% lang for your errors kaya for you to pass, be man rev you just have to get 60% pero kung uh, 100% yan do you think mag-aaral pa ba kayo kasi alam niyo naman na kahit kami siguro na reviewer na at some point, baka nalito rin or whatever, hindi rin, baka hindi rin namin makuha itong 100%. Yung mga estudyante pa na, syempre, they are just starting learning almost everything. Kaya, uh, hindi natin ginagamit yung ideal or yung perfect na standard. Kahit sa buhay natin, no, pag may mga standards tayong sineset sa pagpili ng kung ano-ano mga desisyon natin sa buhay, kapag we are too strict, Napakahirap i-achieve nung standard na yan. Your standard should be smart. Ano nga yung smart na yun? S for specific. You, you really have to determine ano ba talaga yung 
standard na sinaset mo. Or materials, ga, ilang materials? Dalawang pounds ba ng materials ang kailangan mo to come up with one pound of your output and so on? We are very specific on that. M, measurable. So yan, nasabi naman natin, two pounds for every one pound. So measurable. A4, uh, attainable. Yun yung sinasabi natin, baka naman yung two pounds na yan, E eh, sobrang bawal na bawal masira or what. Eh kasi syempre minsan ang empleyado nabibitawan yung mga mga materials, may nababasag, may ibang nangyayari. So kung wala kang allowance talaga for spoilage, eh, talagang hindi mo ma-achieve yung 2 pounds na yan. Kaya nga it should be achievable. At ang managers, kung alam niya na perfect or ideal yung standard na sinet, it's too Uh, difficult for them to achieve or impossible for them to achieve to perfectly uh, parang makuha yung standard na yun, they will not be motivated because one of the objectives ng, ng standard cost system is to motivate the managers. Okay? Nasaan na ba tayo? Oh, realistic. That's why we sometimes do benchmarking. We have to check. Sa NU, 60% ang passing sa ibang school, 75%. Pero sila, nagtatransmute kasi. Tayo, pro score yung 60. Kaya, realistic po yung 60% natin. Pwede ba na ang set natin na passing sa B-Man Ref, 20% lang? Do you think? This is achievable. Pasok yan sa SMA. Pero yung realistic, no. Kasi, for you to pass si Pali, you need to get 75%. So, hindi rin natin isaset yung 20% na passing sa atin para lang ma-achieve ma ng mga estudyante. So, we are really setting realistic based on what? Based on the external factors tulad na ano ba yung hinihingi ng BOA, ano ba yung ginagawa ng ibang schools. That's why we are setting the standard at 60%. Ano, nasa na ba tayo? And T, time bound. Ito ang pinaka-importante na kailangan maintindihan din natin. Time bound. Yung standard natin During the period of evaluation, kung ano ba itong 60%, during this term, hindi natin pwedeng baguhin yan. Dapat it has to be 60% na standard for the entire term. Hindi pwedeng 60% ngayon at the middle of the term, nakita ko, masyadong magaling yung mga bata, they are getting 80% and so on. Dahil dyan, gagawin ko na 80% ang passing. Hindi po natin pwedeng gawin yan. Even in, in uh, organizations, hindi po pwedeng gawin yan during the period of operations or evaluation. Why? Kasi ang gulo ng performance report mo, pabago-bago ka ng standard within a period of evaluation. Pero sabi natin kanina, pwede naman baguhin yung standard. Pwede po, pero not during the period of evaluation. Kung nakita mo, for so many times, Iba na yung actual talaga with the standard. That's the only time that you review first your standard and you change. Kung sa tingin namin, sobrang achievable na it is very easy for you to get 60%, maybe it's time sa susunod na term na gawin na siyang 70 na raw score. Pero hindi ko pwedeng i-apply yan during your time. Okay? Kaya ngayon, pag nagbago yan, hindi tayo papayag kasi hindi nga pwedeng baguhin during our time because it has to be smart. Okay. Otherwise, or various analysis, mawala ng silbe, mawala ng saisay kung pabago-bago yung standard mo. So, static and flexible budget. Ito naman yung sinasabi natin. Yes, hindi natin babaguhin yung budget. Hindi, na, hindi natin babaguhin yung standard natin. But it has to be flexible. Why? Mahirap mag-compare ng isa sa kaliwa, dalawa sa kanan. It has to be flexible. Ibig sabihin, as we go on, actually alam nyo na to, review lang ng static and flexible budget. Pag static budget natin, that is prepared for one specific level of planned activity. Kung ano lang talaga yung plano. Pero, ang flexible budget naman, that is being adjusted. Adjusted po to the actual level of activity. Ang plano mo is for 500 na units. Pero ang actual mo is for 550. Hindi pwede na yung yung actual mo ay i-compare mo sa 500 units. Dapat gumawa ka ng panibagong budget or flexible budget na nakaayon sa 550 units. Okay? 
Pero kung 500 units ang actual mo, agad-agad, your actual data would be compared with the static budget. No problem. Pero kung iba, yung actual mo, you really have to prepare flexible budget. And when you say flexible budget, re-reviewin natin yan in a short while. Okay. Characteristics po kasi ng flexible budgets. So planning budgets are prepared for a single plan of activity. And then, performance evaluation is difficult when actual activity differs from the planned level of activity. Nasabi ko na kanina yan sa inyo. Kasi it's like comparing an apple with an orange. Kung ano ba yung, alin ba mas masarap, apple or orange? Siyempre, iba yung, ibang iba yung lasa talaga nung, nung dalawa na yan. Alin ba mas mabenta, apple or orange? Eh, magkaiba rin sila ng presyo. So, dapat, mag, pag magkukompare ka, apple versus apple, orange versus orange. Parang ganun lang ang ibig sabihin when we are trying to prepare flexible budget. Okay, so ang flexible budget may be prepared for any level in the relevant range. I hope hindi nyo nakakalimutan yung discussion natin sa relevant range. Now, within that specific range lang natin may expect na linear at yung mga cost relationships natin ay valid. And then, we show costs that should have been incurred. Should have been incurred at the actual level of activity. Kaya nga, some, ang flexible budgets, ito is more on the standard. It's not the, the budget na pre-repair natin dun sa, na, sa static natin last. Hindi, yung kanina, sa static natin. And it helps the managers control cost and improve performance evaluation. So let's look at this uh, illustration at Larry's loan service. Wala po ito sa handout ninyo. So panoorin po natin. Okay? So we will try to show the deficiencies of the static planning budget. When we uh, when we say that, ibig sabihin, yung actual kasi natin, if we really insist to compare with the static planning budget lang, makikita natin kung ano yung pwedeng maging problema or misleading na mga information na ma ma makukuha natin dito. Okay? So, the company or Larry's Loan Service provides loan care in a planned community where all loans are approximately the same size. Okay? So, at the end of May, Larry prepared his June budget based on mowing 500 loans. Okay, so ang budget natin is prepared based on 500 loans. And since all of the loans are similar in size, Larry felt that the number of loans mowed in a month would be the best way to measure overall activity for his business. Okay, so similar size sa month, kaya number of loans na lang. Pero kung hindi po yan similar size, sa tunay na buhay kapag nag-gagwari uh, kayo ng budget nito soon, kapag nagtatrabaho na kayo, Kung di similar size, maybe you can get the area, bawat loan. Yung square, yung area ang magiging basis natin, not the number of loans. Okay, pero since similar size naman yung loans natin, we can make use na yung number of loans as our basis. Okay, so we will just show you, I'll just show you the budget for 500 loans. We come up with the revenue na 37,500 because every... Uh, pag mow ng loan, 75 po ang price. Okay? And here are your expenses. Tingnan na po natin yung expenses natin dito. Itong nasa unahan, wages and salaries, 5,000 plus 30Q. Q, number of loans. No? Kung mapapansin mo, ito ay mixed cost. Bakit mixed cost? May fixed component at may variable component. Your 30 is your VCU at yung Q, yung X natin, if you remember in our, our discussion on cost terms, concepts, and classification. Okay, so this is a mixed cost. Bakit naging mixed cost to? Pag naghiwalay ito, ang wages po ay variable cost generally. Ang salaries, yan po yung fixed cost. Kaya pag na-encounter nyo sa exam, salaries lang, fixed cost po yan. Pag wages po, variable cost po yan. Eh sabi rito, Wages and salaries, kaya ito ay mixed cost. So, 20,000. Gasoline and supplies, equipment maintenance. Kung mapapansin, anong klaseng cost yan? Nakamultiply with the number of loans. So, yan ay variable cost. Okay? 
And then the office supplies, office and shop rent, depreciation, insurance, kung makikita nyo po, fixed amount. And that is your, and these are your fixed costs. Okay, so nilagyan ka rin yan ng uh, label. Ayan. Kapag guma, so ito yung static budget natin. Pag gumawa tayo mamaya ng flexible budget, it is important that you know kung ano yung variable at fix. Because yung fix natin, tulad ng sabi natin, hindi magbabago within the relevant range. Yung variable cost natin would be adjusted. So it depends on the, on the number of loans that we're going to mow. Okay. So, ito po yung actual results natin. Instead of 500, ang actual loans mode natin ay 550. So dito, if we compare yung 500 at 550 immediately, pinagtabi natin dito, ito po ang mangyayari. So ang revenue natin ay 43,000. Ang wages and salaries ay 23,500. Actual results po to. Sa actual, possible, na hindi masunod perfectly yung ating uh, budget na nandito. Just like the insurance, 1,000 dito, but actually is 1, 2. So, ito yung, yung budget natin. I-compare natin sa actual natin. I, again, the, this budget is a static. Anong mangyay? Okay, kesa sa uh, budget na revenue natin. Kesa sa expected natin. Look at the expenses. Ang... Um, Okay, am I uh, still clear? Medyo nagtulolo ko lang ng konti. Konti lang naman yung internet ko. Clear pa ba ako, Darvin? Sir? Darvin, clear pa ba? Medyo naglolo ko, sir. Medyo, pero wala kanina, uh, diretso naman or dito lang. Okay, so, sige, sige. Going back. Ayan, so, it, we are doing the price uh, computation here. So, gasoline, five, uh, we expected for 5, but the actual is 5.1. Mas mataas ng 600 yung expense, kaya unfavorable. So, you, you do that in all the items here. Now, kaya lang, 500 ang plano, pero 550 ang actual. So, ano nangyari sa interpretation natin? Okay. So, yung favorable variance natin sa revenue, tapos unfavorable yung variance natin dito sa dalawa, favorable dito, and then unfavorable. Overall, makikita mo, 1,450 favorable. Mukhang favorable, sabi, ng variance analysis natin when compared to static planning budget. Kaya lang, tulad ng sabi natin kanina, we cannot do that. Dapat, yung budget natin would be adjusted sa actual and we are going to prepare the flexible budget. Okay, the relevant question is, how much of the cost variances are due to higher activity and how much are due to cost control? And to answer the question, we must flex the budget to the actual level of activity. And to do that, tulad na sabi ko kanina, we have to determine the variable cost because that is the one that we're going to adjust. But the fixed cost would remain unchanged within the relevant range. So pag gumawa tayo, copy lang natin yung fixed cost. Variable cost, paano natin pineprepare yon? So yung total variable cost mo sa budget, i-divide mo sa yung plano mong units. Yung plan natin na units. Tapos, after that, i-multiply mo sa actual na units natin. So, we, I'll show you in the next slides. Ayan. So, this is your flexible budget. So, 550. So, ayan. So, so 550, 41,250 ang in-expect natin na revenue dyan. And here are the other items. Paano na ko yung 21,500? 5,000 plus 30. We multiply here the 550. Ito, nakamultiply ng 550. 
ito naka-multiply ng 550 yung equipment maintenance but all the rest would be copied kasi ito lahat ay fixed cost again only the variable cost and your revenue would be adjusted because all of these are variable components pero ang fix just copy in your flexible budget Okay, so let's compare. And by the way, ang tawag po natin sa variance kapag revenue pinag, ang pinag-uusapan, friendly naman yung term. Lahat ng variances natin, kung ano yung pangalan ng variance, makikita mo andun yung magkaiba. Revenue variance because the actual revenue ay iba sa flexible budget revenue. Ito ay spending variance naman or total cost variance kasi yung actual cost mo ay iba sa flexible budget cost mo. Okay, so possible in the exam you will encounter in term na revenue variance and spending variance or simply the total cost variance. Okay, so let's have here. At this point, we now prepared yung ating flexible budget and i-compare natin yan sa actual results. So at this, at this time, talagang pwede nang i-compare or comparable na talaga yung data natin. So dito, revenue variance natin ay 1750. And then, ang spending variance natin ay pinagsama-samang lahat ng variances ng cost natin. 1,950, unfavorable overall. Mas malaki yung total expenses natin than expected. Tingnan po ah, 200, unfavorable ang overall na performance natin. Below expectation. We expected 6,650 pero the actual is only 6,450. So kanina... Nung sa static tayo, tayo nag-compare, lumalabas na favorable. But in reality, unfavorable po yung nangyaring operations natin. So yun yung deficiency in comparing your actual with the static planning budget. Kaya again, sa exams, we have to prepare flexible budget. Okay, so let's try this one. Itong problem na to. Okay, pero check lang, malinaw pa ba ako sa inyo so far? Baka mamaya, dere-derecho na naman ako. Darvin, ikaw muna ang ano ko ha, tagasagot. Yes, malinaw ba? Yes. Thank you yes. so much. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so ito yung ating uh, problem number one. The following data from Division X of Angela Aguas were gathered. So we have here the budget and the actual. Tapos, itong 1 to 4 different scenarios lang. Sabi sa number 1, if the budget was prepared based on 2,000 units, actually lahat pala sila prepared based on 2,000 units, itong budget natin. Okay? Pero sa number 1, actual units happen to be equal with the plan. So, ibig sabihin, 2,000 din to. Pero sa number 2, the actual units... 85% of the plan. So, ibig sabihin, in number 2, 1,700 units lang ang actual natin. So, in that case, we have to prepare flexible budget based on 1,700 units. In number 3, 95%. So, that's 1,900. So, gagawa ulit tayo ng flexible budget para sa 1,900. The number 4 is 5% higher than the plan. So, at this point, So, ilan to 2,100. Gagawa ulit tayo ng flexible budget. Dito, hindi na kailangan gumawa ng flexible budget simply because the actual units happen to be equal with the plan. Okay? Gagawa lang ng flexible budget pag hindi equal yung actual with your plan. So, let's try number one. So, how do we do this? Ano ba ang tanong sa number one? What is the total cost variance or what is the... Total na spending variance. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ang titignan lang natin ay yung mga costs natin. At sabi rito, actual units happen to be equal. So, immediately, this is for 2,000 units at ang actual ay pang 2,000 units. Comparable na po yung dalawa. So, variance. Gawa tayo ng column for variance. For your variable COGS, we expected 180. <coughs> Sorry, the actual is 187,000 So we have here 7,000 na favorable or unfavorable Mas malaki ang actual cost to So ito ay unfavorable Okay, and then after that Fixed manufacturing cost 6,500 ang difference natin 
We expected 40 but the actual is 46.5. Mas malaki, unfavorable uli. Variable selling natin, 8,000. Pero, mas mababa yung actual, ito ay favorable. How about the fixed admin? 2,000. Mataas ang actual, unfavorable. Ang fixed selling natin, 3,000. Mataas ang actual, unfavorable. Kaya naman, ang total spending variance natin, may pinagsama-samang lahat ng variances na to. So, magkano ito? That would be 10,000... 500 F or U Unfavorable Kasi mas malaki yung mga U So 7 plus 6.5 Plus 2 plus 3 Minus 8 So 10,500 U Is our spending variance So that would be for Number 1 Okay Paano pag tinanong lang sa exam Magkano revenue variance Iti compare lang The budgeted sales with the actual sales and the answer is 10,000 is it favorable or unfavorable you expected for 80 mababa ang actual e revenue to so ito ay unfavorable so that is your revenue variance okay pag tinanong ang total variance natin. So that's the time na pagsasama-samayan mo lahat ng yan. So 10,000 U, 105 U, pinagsama natin 20,500 na unfavorable. So pwede kasi na same question pero ang tanong lang si revenue variance naman this time or yung total na performance ng uh, Division X of Angela Aguas. Okay? So pag kinuha mo rin yung total na budget natin, Ito ay 152,000 yung operating income natin expected. But the actual is only 131,500. Kaya pag kinopare mo yung dalawa, makikita mo 20,500 din na unfavorable. Why? Because the actual is less than the expected na e income na pinag-uusapan. So kabalik tara ng convention ng cost natin. So equal sa dito. So pag tanong ay total na variance, dito po tayo sa ilalim, titingin. Pag tinanong ay spending, dito lang lahat sa cost. Pag tinanong ay revenue, dito lang sa revenue or sales natin. That would be for number one. So, let's go to number two. Okay? So, this time, 2,000 units ang actual. So, pang 2,000 to. And the actual, ah, no, 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 no. Uh, this one is, ang 2,000 ay yung budget natin. So this one is for 2,000 units. But the actual is 85% of the plan. So this is 1,700. So again, hindi comparable. So that's why you have to prepare your flexible budget. Okay? Gawa tayo ng flexible budget natin. Magkano ang sales natin in problem number 2? So para makuha, 480,000 divided by 2,000. Mumultiply natin ng 1, 7. So, 480 divided by 2,000 times 1, 7. So, the answer is 408,000. Or, pwede naman na dahil may percentage naman tayo dito, 480,000 times 85%. That is also 408,000. Okay. And then, the variable codes. So, 180 divided by 2,000 times 17 or simply 180 times 0.85 and the answer is 100 multiply na 17 syempre hindi kasi ito ay fixed so ito ay 40,000 okay yung variable selling natin 38,000 times 85% the answer is 32,300. The fixed admin is 20,000. Tapos ang fixed selling natin ay uh, 50,000. Ayan, so 50,000. Ang tinatanong ay total cost variance or total spending variance. So again, gagawa tayo ng variance na column. So dito lang tayo. 
sa budget versus actual. Dito ah, nagkabaliktad lang yung kanan sa kaliwa na ngayon. So we expected 153 na variable cogs but the actual is 187. So magkano variance natin? 187 minus 153, that's 34,000. Is it favorable or unfavorable? Malaki yung actual, e eh, costo. So ito ay unfavorable. So ngayon, actual ay 46,500, 6,500 pa rin po tayo na unfavorable. Mataas ang actual. Dito sa dalawa, mababa ang actual, favorable to na 2,300. Ito, 20 versus 22, mataas ang actual, 2,000 to na unfavorable. 50 and 53, mataas ang actual, 3,000 na unfavorable. Ayan. So, magkano yung total spending variance natin? Magkano to? In number 2, that would be, ayan, plus, 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 43,200 na unfavorable spending variance. Magkano yung var variance ng revenue? Ito po ang sagot ha, tatanong lang naman sa revenue. Budget is 408, but the actual is 470. So there is 62,000. Malaki ang actual, e eh, revenue to, favorable po ito. Okay? Pero magkano yung total variance natin? So 62F, 43,200U, ang total na uh, variance natin is 18,000. 800 na favorable. Okay? But again, ang question po, at ang, ang answer natin sa number 2 ay 43,200 unfavorable. Sometimes wala namang problema na kapag prepare ka ng flexible budget, na compare mo naman yung flexible budget with the actual, pero minsan ang problema mo yung F or U. Make sure hindi ka na magpapalito doon. Pag cost sa pinag-uusapan, mataas ang actual, unfavorable. Kung mababa ang actual, Favorable. Pero pag sales or income na pinag-uusapan, mataas ang actual, favorable. Kabalik taran, unfavorable. Okay? So, in number 3, medyo ganun din pero 95% of the plan. Let's just go to number 4. Wherein, yung ating actual units ay... Ba't mawawala ang aking pen? Okay, yung actual units natin ay 5% higher than the plan. Again, the budget is for 2000 but the actual is for 2,100 or at 105%. Okay. So we have to prepare again flexible budget. So magkano yung flexible budget natin this time? That would be 480 times 1.05 and that is 504,000. Ang tanong po kasi dito, what is the variance on its operating income or yung pinaka uh, total na natin na variance dito po sa ilalim. One way is uh, kunin mo muna yung total sa ilalim compare the two. Pero one way, another way is compare isa-isa yung items. So it's up to you. Kunin nyo mas okay sa inyo. So gawin muna natin. Variable cogs natin. 180 times 1.05 This is 189,000. Okay, and then 40,000 pa rin ang ating fixed cost. Ang variable selling ay 38,000 times 1.05 or divided by 2,000 times 2,100. And this is 39,900. Okay, Ika? dito mukhang zero. Okay, ayan. And then the fixed admin, again 20,000. The fixed selling is 50,000. Okay. So, again, compare the actual with the flexible budget. Magkano ang variance natin sa taas? 504 less 470. 34,000. Pero ang tanong, is it favorable or unfavorable? We expected 504. But the actual is only 470. So, therefore, ito ay unfavorable because ito ay sales. 189,000 ang expect 187 ang actual. 2,000. Mas mababa pero cost. So, ito ay favorable. 
40 versus 46.5, 6,500. Mas mataas, unfavorable. Kung mapapansin nyo, pag fix ang pinag-uusapan ko ano yung variance noon, nito, yung pa rin yung variance niya kahit gumawa ka ng flexible budget, simply because ang fixed cost remain unchanged. Kahit gumawa ka ng flexible budget, basta within the relevant range. So this is 9,900 na uh, mababa ang actual, favorable. And this one is 2,000, unfavorable. Ito naman, 50 and 53, 3,000 na unfavorable also. Okay, so let's just get the total. So that would be 34 minus 2 plus 6.5 minus 9,900 plus... 2,000 plus 3,000. So the answer is 33,600 na unfavorable na variance ng operating income. Okay? By the way, in number 3, baka hanapin nyo lang din. The answer is 7,400 unfavorable. Nobel tayo sa number 4. The answer is 33,600 unfavorable. After this session, uh, isusend ko po sa inyo yung answer na uh, mula sa simula hanggang CVP analysis. Hindi ko lang nasend kagabi, medyo may hirap pa rin talaga yung signal sa ano sa place. So after this session, uh, remind nyo ko kung makalimutan ko man, pero I'll, I'll, do, I'll make sure na isusend ko sa inyo today. Okay, so any questions so far before I uh, leave the flexible budget? Tingnan ko nga. Wala. Okay. So, we will now proceed with the discussion ng pinaka-standard na talaga. Okay? So, sabi natin, standards are benchmarks or norms for measuring performance. So, in managerial accounting, we have the quantity standards and price standards. So, pag sinabi natin quantity standards, depende kung materials ba to, labor ba to, o overhead ba to. Quantity yung pinag-uusapan. Kung price standards naman, kung materials, di yung price ng materials. Kung labor, yung rate ng uh, mga workers natin. Kung overhead, kung ano ba yung uh, rate na ginagamit natin sa so overhead. Okay. And standard quantity per unit, importante na malaman natin saan sa actual na sa tunay na, na buhay sa natin makukuha sa bill of materials is standard quantity per unit. Yung standard price naman saan nakukuha yan? Dun sa final delivered cost of materials net of discount. Hindi po kasama yan na, na nagiging part ng standard price. But anyways, in MAS usually given naman kung ano yung standard quantity, given naman standard price, hindi naman pinapakompute kung magkano ang standard price out of all the data na kasi iba-iba nga yung pagset may mga kasamang allowance for losses iba hindi or depende so most likely given po yung dalawa na yan okay sa labor naman san kinukuha yung standard hours use of time and motion studies for each labor operations tinitingnan yung iba nakabiometrics every time they work on specific job Naka, magta-time in sila, encode nila kung anong job yung gagawin nila, and magta-time out sila para makapture ilang standard hours talaga ang kailangan natin. Yung iba, uh, DTR pa rin. Yung iba, uh, ano nga time card pa rin ang ginagamit dyan. Standard rate, often a single rate is used. Especially kung lahat ng empleyado ay gumagamit ng minimum wage sa lahat ng factory workers nila. But there are times na may mga skilled tayo ng mga factory workers na meron silang uh, a bit higher na salary or wages pala compared to other factory workers. So in that case, possible magkaroon tayo ng uh, variance ulit dahil sa iba-ibang empleyado yung iba-ibang klase ng empleyado yung meron tayo. Okay? Quantity standard. Pagdating sa overhead, ang overhead kasi marami yan, di ba? If you remember yung ating T-ROOD, lahat ng items na yan, ginagawa na lang natin, we just allocate 
cost uh, allocation. We just determine the total and then we allocate to the products. So, anong ginagamit natin? Allocation base for predetermined overhead rate. So, price standard naman rate ng overhead natin. So, it depends also kung anong ginagamit natin na driver. Okay. The standard cost card would look like this. But definitely, hindi naman ganitong ganito sa lahat. Ang gusto lang ipakita nito, for materials, 3 pounds bawat output and 4 pesos per pound or 4 dollars. So, 12 ang ating uh, materials per unit. Labor, 35 so, ganito nakabreakdown. 2.5 hours kasi yan. So, 14 per hour ang standard rate natin ngayon. Sa overhead, 2.5 hours. 3 per hour ang standard rate natin sa ngayon. Okay? Kaya, kaya nga, kapag actual na yung ginawa mo, maaaring hindi lang 3 pounds yung ginamit mo o maaaring mas mababa sa 3 pounds. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng variance sa quantity ng materials. Or sa, sa materials naman natin sa price, Sometimes we are able to get at lower price. So, iba sa 4 pesos kaya nagkakaroon ng variance sa price. Ganun din dito. Sa direct labor, sometimes hindi naman ito yung binabayad natin sa empleyado. Maaring skilled sila, we may pay higher. Pero syempre, kung mga skilled yan, baka naman most likely, itong labor hours natin could be lower. Kasi mga skilled naman sila. Pero... Kung bago lang yung mga empleyado natin ulit, itatrain na naman. So, it could be longer dito sa direct labor na yan. Yung mga sinasabi ko na yun, uh, pwede nga itanong kasi sa exam, sa theories, yung ano yung mga reasons kung bakit nagkakaroon ng labor na variances, labor efficiency variance, ano yung mga reasons. So, So, meron akong signal uli dito na parang sinasabi na ako ay medyo nagchachapi. So, hinay-hinay ng konti. Darvin, nawala nga ba ako? Yes po, sir. Yes po, sir. Pero matagal? Mm, medyo, sir. Talaga? Okay. Pero, saan ako nawala? Dito sa standard cost card? Apo. Bago lang na. Oh. Ah, ito. Ito. Dito. Okay. So, gusto lang natin i-highlight dito. Yung sa theory part, no? Na kung bakit nagkakaroon ng materials na variances. Bakit meron labor variances. Bakit may overhead variances. So, bakit kaya hindi nasusunod ang 3 pounds? Bakit minsan magagamit natin 4 pounds? Mas marami. Kasi minsan, substandard yung ating... Uh, materials. Kung substandard, mas maraming materials gagamitin mo. So, kung substandard, maaring mas mura. Kaya minsan, kung favorable ka rito, sa kabilang side, unfavorable ka. Kung unfavorable ka rito, sa kabilang side, favorable ka. Kung ito, mas marami ka nagamit kasi mura pala yung mga materials mo. Yun yung ayaw natin mangyari sana. Gusto natin na uh, Kung makatipid ka man, pero hindi na sa sacrifice yung quality ng ating mga materials. Siguro nakatipid ka kasi volume na yung in-order natin kasi ang dami na natin pinuproduce. Bakit 4 pounds to? Dahil nasisira yung ibang materials. Yung iba naman 2.75 pounds lang. Bakit kaya? Kasi uh, skilled yung mga workers natin. Kaya talagang very careful sila sa paghandle ng materials. Kaya related din po yan. Kung skilled yan... Ano pa mga pwedeng maapektuhan? Itong number of hours, mabilis gumawa, maingat sa materials. Ano pa? Ito, possible na unfavorable. Bakit? Mas mahal ang rate nila. Again, kung skilled ang worker, favorable sa materials kasi mas konti nagagamit, magaling talaga sila. Favorable sa, sa efficiency mas maiksi yung oras na ginagamit pero mahal silang mga skilled na workers Ayan. so kapag naman uh, bago ang empleyado ano mangyayari unfavorable yan siguro sa materials kasi hindi pa magaling maghandle sa labor efficiency unfavorable yan siguro dahil mabagal pa pero pagdating sa uh, rate natin sa labor favorable kasi mas mura yung mga bago Minimum pa rin sila. 
yung mga ganong bagay. So, uh, most likely ganito yung ating standard cost card. Pero hindi man ganito yung itsura sa mga companies na papasukan nyo someday, pero ibang format lang siguro. Okay. Using standards in flexible budget, ang focus ka lang natin this time ay yung spending variances. More on the costs. Okay. Pero naka-breakdown into price and quantity variances. So, variance analysis, nasabi na natin kanina, price variance occurs because the actual price is different from the standard price. And then, actual quantity, kapag iba sa standard quantity, quantity variance yan. Kaya, alistahan ng mga variances, pakita ko mamaya ulit, pero alam nyo naman na yun. Okay, pero bakit ba i-divide, bakit ba natin bine-breakdown yung mga variances? Because, Different managers are usually responsible for buying and using inputs. Iba-iba kasi sila. For example, si purchasing manager ang bumibili ng raw mats. Pero ang gumagamit ay si yung team ni production manager. So maraming pwedeng mangyari along the way. Possible kasi na raw materials, raw materials purchases may be held in inventory for a period. Nabili na noon after 2 months na, na gamit. Okay, so ibig sabihin, maaaring possible na maayos ang trabaho ni purchasing manager, maayos din naman trabaho ng production manager, pero ang tagal na gamit ng inventory. So may problema sa scheduling siguro and so on. Okay, so listahan na price variances, materials price variance, labor rate variance, VOH rate variance. Pag quantity, materials quantity variance, labor efficiency, and variable overhead efficiency Uh, variance Wait lang Pagdating sa price variance Price variance I hope you can still remember Yung isa, pwedeng at the time of purchase Yung isa at the time of Issuance So papakita natin later Yung difference nung dalawa i -re recall natin later pala Okay, iba yung pag uh, Pero sa theories Ano ba talagang gagamitin natin Purchase or issuance sa exam, kung silent ang problem, anong gagamitin natin? The answer is, at the time of purchase. Kasi ang sabi ng, ng standard costing system, all inventory should be carried at standard. So with that, dapat i-recognize mo all variances at the earliest time possible, and which is at the time of purchase, not at the time of issue. Ayan. So, may signal uli ako. Ayan. So, medyo bumabagal uli ang signal na na-detect ko naman siya kapag ganun. So, Tyra. Yes, Tyra. Okay, wala ko. Ayun. Ah, okay. Nabindot mo lang. Okay. So, if you have question, please uh, feel free na magsalita. So, yun. Pero going back, I'm not so sure if you have heard yung sinabi ko na pagdating sa price variance ng materials. Kasi diba, uh, sabi ng standard costing system, i-recognize mo at the earliest time possible yung variance. Kasi nga, ang rule natin is all inventories are carried at standard. And that is at the time of purchase kapag silent ang problem. Pero may mga companies talaga, in reality, they are using at the time of issuance talaga. Kung kailan lang gagamitin sa sa production, that's the only time that they recognize the price variance. So, depende sa company kung ano adapt Pero, again, sabi ng theory, sabi ng uh, sa exam natin, purchase po tayo. Ayan. And ito po, sample lang ng conversation ng production manager and purchasing manager. Sabi ng production manager, by the way, si production manager, ang in-charge kasi, pagdating sa more on quantity variance. Lahat ng variances ang may kinalaman sa quantity. Si production manager ang sumasagot. Si purchasing manager, ano, saan siya pwede pumasok? Sa price variance ng materials. Sabi ng production manager, I am not responsible for this unfavorable materials quantity variance. Hindi niya kasalanan. 
because you purchase cheap material, so my people had to use more of it. So, ito is more on uh, we are trying to uh, determine the root causes ng variances. Okay, and then sabi ng purchasing manager, your poor scheduling sometimes requires me to rush order materials at a higher price causing unfavorable price variances because it happens in reality na minsan yung mga production manager last minute manghingi na o oh, magbigay ng mga kailangan nila. So in that way, may eh, kailangan sa production, si purchasing manager had to rush the order and that would mean higher price. So lumabas sa investigation, th that is how we investigate in reality. So, lumabas sa investigation, ang reason pala is a production manager ang may kasalanan. Poor scheduling. So, pag nakita, lumutang na yung reason kung bakit may variance, we, have, we can now properly take actions. So, si production manager has to work out or has to improve yung kanyang scheduling to avoid yung rush order ng materials. Okay? So, kung... Kung, kung, dito, kung ang tinanong mo lang, si production manager, sinisisi lang niya si purchasing manager. Pero nung na, nag-dig deeper ka sa investigation mo, kung ikaw ay management accountant, ganyan ang gagawin mo, you will find out na ang reason talaga ay siya mismo. Yung poor scheduling niya. Okay? Another, for labor variances naman, sabi ni production manager sa naman, naninisi, Production managers are usually held accountable for labor variances because they can influence, ay hindi pa pala ito conver conversation nila. Bakit si production manager ang accountable for labor variances? They know the mix of skill levels assigned to work tasks. Alam nila kung sino magaling dito, kaya, pwede nilang balansin, kailangan ba lahat na mag-work sa job na to ay skilled lahat o pwede isang skilled lang, marami ng mga normal lang na mga workers. So, mas alam ni production manager yan. <clears throat> and level of employee motivation. So, depende how the manager motivates employee. The quality of production supervision ba? Kung sila ba talaga ay uh, hands-on sa pagbabantay sa production and so on. Okay? And the training, of course, provided to the employees. Pag hinarm ba nila agad, sabak agad sa production yung mga empleyado or they will undergo mga two weeks na training muna so that when the time comes na magiging uh, live na siya sa production, talagang magaling na siya. So, depende po talaga yan. Okay? So, let's have this conversation na ulit nung dalawa. Sisihan portion ulit. Sabi ng production manager, I am not responsible for unfavorable labor efficiency variance. Sabi na naman niya, sinisi na naman si purchasing manager. You purchased cheap material, so it took more time to process it, sabi ni production manager. Sabi ni, uh, ni sinong hato, purchasing manager, I think it took more time to process the materials because the maintenance department has poorly maintained your equipment. So, at the end of the day, bumato as long as you are doing your job, protected ka talaga, hindi ka masisisi. Kita mo, natatrabaho pa lang na maayos si purchasing manager. Ang may kasalanan pa lang ngayon, yung maintenance department. Pero actually, dapat siya ang nag ensure uli na na may maintain talaga yung equipments na ginagamit natin. Kaya po may over, kasama sa overhead natin yung repairs and maintenance. So it's because of the equipment pala, kaya nagkaroon ng unfavorable labor efficiency Yan. So si lulutang at lulutang ano ang reason bakit iba ang actual sa expected natin. Okay? So without proper investigation, hindi mo mapapalutang yan at masisisi mo ang maling tao. So you have to make sure na ma-pinpoint ano yung mali para maitama talaga kung ano talaga yung totoong mali. Okay? Materials variances. So let's go now to computation. At the time of purchase po muna yung pag-uusapan natin. Pag bumili ka ng materials, ang entry mo, debit, <coughs> raw materials, inventory, and credit, accounts payable usually. Okay? Wait lang. Accounts payable 
usually. Okay? Sabi natin at the time of purchase, sabi rin natin sa standard cost system, we have to recognize the variance at the earliest time possible. So that means the raw materials inventory should be valued at standard. Kaya ito ay standard price, multiply mo na actual quantity purchased mo. Pero ang babayaran mo sa, sa supplier mo, of course, actual price. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na itong standard ko, ito lang babayaran ko sa inyo. So you have to pay actual price times the actual quantity that you purchased. Okay? At kung makikita mo, yung debit and credit mo magkaiba ng price. And that means na meron tayong materials price variance. Ano magkaiba? Magkaiba ang price. Pangalan ng variance pa lang, alam mo na kung ano magkaiba. Ano ang magkamuka? Actual quantity. Whenever there is a problem in the price, the actual quantity is being multiplied. Kahit labor pa pinag-uusapan, may problema sa rate, actual hours ang minumultiply natin. Okay? Kung makakalimutan mo kung ano yung dapat i-multiply dito, you can go back to the, to the entry when we purchase raw materials. Pag nakalimutan mo. Okay? Pero huwag kang manghuhula basa-basa kung hindi ka sure. Pero pwede mo tandaan na lang kung may problema sa price, actual quantity talaga ang ginagamit. Whether materials or labor pa yan. Okay. So, eh, sabi sa exam, materials price variance has debit balance. Ano to? Favorable or unfavorable? Kung debit balance yan, so pupunta yan sa MPV, nasa debit. Bakit siya nasa debit? Kasi mas malaki yung AP kesa sa SP. Ibig sabihin, ito ay unfavorable. Okay? Because sometimes in the exam, hindi sasabihin that the materials price variance is unfavorable. Ang sasabihin niya, has debit balance. So kapag debit pala, unfavorable. So tandaan po yan. Now, Nag-purchase, mag issue kay production. So, debit, work in process, and credit, raw materials, inventory. Standard price. Bakit standard price na naka-credit? Because you already valued your RMI at standard. Okay? Times the actual quantity. Pareha silang dalawa. Mukhang sa formula, but definitely this is actual quantity purchased. But this one is actual quantity issued to production. Okay? So, be careful with your formula. So, ang width natin is standard price times standard quantity. So, kung makikita mo, magkamukha ang price, magkaiba ang quantity. Kaya meron tayong materials quantity variance. Okay? So, quantity variance. So, there is difference in your quantity times your Standard price. Baka standard price yun po yung magkamukha sa kanilang dalawa. So whenever there is a problem in the quantity or in the number of hours, we always multiply standard price or standard na labor rate. Okay. So eh, sabi natin, MQV has credit balance. Ba bakit naging credit? Kasi this time, favorable. Bakit mo ba ilalagay sa credit? Kasi mas malaki si debit. Mas malaki yung SQ kesa sa AQ. Ito po ay nagde-derive derive lang naman tayo para mas maintindihan natin saan ba nang galing yung AQ, SQ, yung credit and favorable and debit and favorable and so on. Para pag ge-exam ka na, nalito ka kung, pa, kung ano ba talaga ang formula, you can always go back sa kauna-unahang entry natin. Because that will remind you na ang difference in your price ay imumultiply sa actual quantity. At alam mo na, sa susunod na may difference, standard na yung imumultiply mo. Standard price. O, credit daw to. So, nandito to sa credit, MQV, Materials Quantity Variance. Okay? Again, sa exam, it's either debit or credit balance or favorable or unfavorable yung sasabihin niya. Okay? Ito ay at the time of purchase. At the time of issuance, ano itsura? Kapag at the time of issuance, that would be debit, raw materials, inventory, and credit, accounts, payable. Pero ito ay value that actual quantity times your actual price. 
Ito, actual quantity of course times actual price. Oops, magkamukha, magkamukha. May variance, wala. Kasi sabi mo, the materials variances, the price variance is recognized at the time of issuance. Therefore, ito ay purchase pa lang. Wala pang issuance na nagaganap. Kaya walang variance. Okay? Kaya pag nag-issue ka sa production debit work in process and credit, raw materials inventory, ito ay actual price times actual quantity pa rin. Kasi you valued your RMI at actual price naman nung binili mo. Kaya nakakredit din, naka din sa'yo ang actual price. Anong debit natin? Standard price times your standard quantity. Ayan. So, kung mapapansin mo, magkaiba ng price, magkaiba ng quantity. Kasi at this point, nagsabay yung variances natin. Materials, price variance, and materials, quantity variance. Sometimes you call it materials usage variance. Okay? Pero whatever na, na tawag pa natin dyan, tunog pa lang, pangalan ng variance, materials, price variance, there's difference in price. Multiply natin ng actual Quantity, magkamukha lang po. Ito naman, difference in quantity, multiply uli ng standard price. E sabi ito daw ay favorable. So, MQV, ilalagay natin sa credit. Ito daw ay unfavorable, ilalagay natin sa debit. Okay? So, wag pong kalimutan yun. Ito, hindi na natin in-analyze, pero basta alam mo na difference in price, quantity ang in-multiply na actual. Difference in quantity, standard price. If we go back sa nauna, magkamukhang magkamukha sila ng formula. Ito, itong, itong sa issuance, magkamukha, magkamukha, magkamukha ng formula. Pero anong difference? Ang actual quantity na nandito ay issued. Okay? Because at the time of issuance, That's the time that you measure the price variance. Okay? That's for materials. So for labor, I think it would be easy for us na ma-establish na yung formula. So meron tayong labor rate variance at labor efficiency variance. Rate variance, difference in your rate, hmm, price din yan. So multiply natin ng actual hours or quantity yan. Pag labor efficiency, difference in hours times your standard rate. I hope automatic na sa atin itong formula na yan. So sana maalala nyo yan palagi. So ano entry natin just to show? Work in process and credit factory payroll. Okay? Ang work in process natin is valued at your standard hours times the standard rate. Ang factory payroll, syempre, bayaran mo sila ng actual hours nila at actual na rate nila, hindi pa rin standard. Okay? Kung makikita mo, dalawa magkaiba, hours and rate. Dito po nagaling si labor rate, variance, and labor efficiency, variance. E sabi rito, favorable si labor rate, unfavorable si labor efficiency. San mo ipapwesto? Favorable labor rate, ilagay sa credit. FC po yan, favorable credit. So, ito ay labor rate variance. Ang entry natin for labor efficiency, nasa unfavorable, labor efficiency variance. Ayan. So, I hope na memorize na. Pero, para sure ako, para ma-check ko din kayo, I would like to call somebody kung talagang natatandaan. Sino kaya? Si... Sophia! Sophia, Miss Chong, hello? Wala namang itong minus, Miss Chong. Para lang sure ako na talaga na-memorize mo na. Hi, Miss Chong. Wala ata si Miss Chong. Si ano na lang, si Kimberly. Hi Kim. Wala ba ako? Baka nawala na ako, kaya wala kaya. Hi Kim.
Wala, Aryan. Hello, Aryan. Wala. Hello po. Yo, so Aryan, usap tayo ha. Thank you, may kausap ako. So Aryan, sasabihin ko yung variance, sabihin mo agad sa akin yung formula. Kailangan automatic na sa atin yan. Materials, price variance. Um, ano, difference of price times actual quantity. Okay, labor, efficiency variance. Labor efficiency, if um difference of hours times standard rate. Okay, basa palagi pag quantity ang difference standard minimum multiply. Ano ba ba sa exam? Materials purchase Sir, price variance. Nagdi disconnect daw po si Sofia. Ah okay lang sige sige sige. Ah uh, ang sabi sa exam materials Ito na lang, uh, Arian. Materials usage price variance. Ano formula natin? Materials usage price variance. Um, ano po? Um, difference in? Difference of, quantity. difference of quantity times standard price. Times standard price. Pero ulitin natin, materials usage price variance. Hindi ko kasi minention kanina. Ang ibang tawag sa price variance, sa materials price variance, kapag at the time of purchase, they call it materials purchase price variance. Pero at the time of issuance, materials usage price variance. But the issue is on the price pa rin. Kaya ang materials usage price variance baka ma-encounter nyo sa exam, it's difference in price times the actual quantity use. Okay? So, pang... Lito lang yung iba yung usage price variance. Pero, uh, how about MPPV? Materials purchase price variance. What's the formula? Ayan, that's the last. Materials um, ano, purchase difference price. Difference of price times actual quantity. But the actual quantity is... Issue the purchase. Uh, purchase. Purchase, correct. Purchase. So, yes, 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 correct. Okay, so wag malilito sa purchase at saka sa actual quantity issue. Thank you, Arian. Okay, so let's go now to this problem. Okay. Uh -huh. What was the actual purchase price per unit? If materials usage variance is 225, the actual quantity use is being asked. Number three, if materials usage variance is 405 unfavorable, actual quantity use ang tinatanong. Okay, so I'll solve this one. So given tayo na standard price, actual quantity purchase, standard quantity, and materials purchase price variance. Ito po yung isang price variance, meaning at the time of purchase. Again, pag sinabi lang materials price variance, wala namang sinabi at the time of issuance, automatic po na ito ay materials purchase price variance. Okay. So, actual purchase price ang tinatanong. Mukhang nililid ka naman talaga dito sa isa na to. Kasi purchase price yung nandito. Okay. So, MPPV is equal to 480. Sabi rito, favorable. Okay. Kung favorable, ibig sabihin, the, the actual price is less than the standard price. Kaya naman, ang MPPV, ang formula mo dyan ay difference in price times the actual quantity purchased. Ngayon, uh, ang formula natin is 480 favorable. Para mawala na yung F na yan, dapat SP minus AP times the actual quantity is equal to 4. 80. Ayan, pag dinistribute mo. Para sure tayo na positive yung lalabas. So, ang SP natin, standard price ay 4.15 minus the actual price na nawawala na tinatanong sa exam. Actual quantity, purchase po ito. So, that would be 2,000 is equal to 480. So, kapag, uh, if you do your math, ang lalabas po dito ay yung actual price is 4.26. May isang clue pa dito. We are trying to make this positive yung nasa kanan. 
So, ibig sabihin, sometimes in the exam, nakalagay dito, 4.5 minus AP. So, ang answer natin should be less than 4.5. So, lahat ng choices sa exam na 4.75, 4.5, na more than 4.5, tanggalin mo na sa choices. Eh, kung minsan, uh, isa lang yung less than 4.5, you don't need to compute. Ito na po yun, automatic na. So, the number one is 4.5. 26. Pero siyempre, for sure, magkocompute at magkocompute ka talaga para mas sigurado. Number two, we are asked for the actual quantity used. Medyo magkaka-idea ka kung ano yung pwede mong gamitin to get the actual quantity. Sabi rito, materials usage variance. Ito ay materials quantity variance din. MQV is difference in your quantity times your standard price. Okay? Eh, sabi niya, ito daw ay 225 favorable. Kaya, SQ minus AQ. Mas mataas ang standard quantity sa actual quantity. Times the standard price is 225. At this point, i-substitute na ang meron tayo. Standard quantity, meron tayong 1,800. Minus actual quantity. Ano ba ito? Issue the purchase. Hindi na po yung purchase. Okay, use na po yung tinatanong. So, AQ. Okay. Multiply natin ang standard price na 4.5. And that is equal to 125. Dapat ang sagot mo is less than 1.8. So, actual quantity natin, ilipat dun yung 4.5. 225 divided by 4.5. Yan. So, the answer is 1,750. So, that's for number 2. Two. Okay? For number 3, 405 unfavorable naman. So, ang gagawin lang natin for number 3, dito na lang. So, MQV is 405 unfavorable. So, therefore, mas malaki yung S, ay, sorry, mas malaki yung actual uh, na quantity natin kesa sa standard na quantity. Okay? So, actual quantity minus standard quantity. Multiply natin ng Standard price, that is your 405. Okay. So, actual quantity, yun po yung nawawala. Minus, ang standard quantity ay 1.8. So, dito pa lang, dapat more than 1.8 yung sagot natin. Standard price natin ay 4.5. And that is equal to 405. Tapos, ang makukuha mo actual quantity is 1,890. So, that's your answer in number 3. 1,890 units. Okay. If you have a question, message lang sa ating chat box or you can raise your hand para ma-express mo na mabuti yung tanong mo. Okay? So, question so far? Darvin, may question ba? Wala naman. Okay. Thank you, Darvin. Okay, so this time, we are asked for the labor efficiency variance. Inuna ko lang po yung mga problem na hindi straightforward na pag sinabi mong labor efficiency variance, efficiency, so difference in hours, multiply natin na standard rate. Hindi yung tipong pag kinuha natin yan, straightforward na masasagot na natin agad. Sometimes, or most of the time, yung question is, we can get this variance out of the other variance. Pero, ang suggestion ko sa inyo, try to fill out the formula first. Pag may kulang, that's the only time that you look for it. Pero kung right the first time na tinanong to, establish ko kagad to. So, actual hours and standard hours, I always separate the actual and standard ng ganito. Para hindi ako nalilito, sometimes tama yung value, pero yung F or U, favorable or unfavorable, minsan na pagbabaliktad. Actual hours natin, 20,000. Standard hours natin, ito po, standard hours ay 21,000. So, ang difference natin ay 1,000 hours. Multiply ng standard rate, eh wala ata. Makukuha ba natin standard rate? Bukang dito natin pwede makuha. Kasi, ang labor rate efficiency, ang labor rate variance rather, ito po ay the labor rate variance na sobrahan na po. Okay. 
Direct labor rate variance is equal to difference in your rate times your uh, actual hours. Okay, sabi rito, 6,000 daw. Ito ay unfavorable. Check natin kung makukompleto na natin. So, actual rate, standard rate. May actual rate ba tayo? Wala talaga. Pero remember, the total payroll is equal to actual rate times the actual hours. May actual hours ka na 20,000. So, ang actual rate natin ay 6.30. Okay? Standard rate. Ito nga po yung nawawala. Kaya nga, uh, iibahin natin ang format. Okay? Uh, repeat. Kaya kung ito ay 6,000 U, mas malaki ang actual rate kesa sa standard rate. Okay? Multiply natin ang actual hours. And that's equal to 6,000. Actual rate, nakuha natin kanina 6.3 galing dito. And then minus standard rate na nawawala. Ang actual hours meron tayo, ito po, 20,000. That is equal to 6,000. So, ang standard rate natin should be less than 6.3. The answer is 6. So, kung may standard rate yan na dito, gamitin na natin dito and that is 6. So, therefore, ito pala ay 6,000 din. Pero, check natin, F or U. Yung AH, mas mababa kesa sa SH. Kaya ako po pinagiwalay para kita ko kagad na mas malaki. So, that would be favorable. The answer is 6,000 favorable. Okay? Ayan. So, I'll just proceed with the next problem. Yung ating uh, Rosaline Manufacturing Company. So, we are asked for estimated direct labor hours, the number of units produced for the month, and the labor efficiency variance. <clears throat> So, hindi naman variance yung tanong sa una, pero estimated, estimated labor hours. Ang estimated labor hours, dito po makukuha yan, standard labor cost. Because that is equal to standard hours times the standard rate. Meron kang standard rate na 30, so you can get your standard hours. So, from here, anong standard hours natin? 90,000. Okay? Sometimes, madali lang naman yung exam. Huwag lang tayo mag-overthink. You just have to look uh, kung ano lang kailangan mo. Minsan, ang dami-daming data. Dapat alam natin kung anong hinahanap lang natin. Standard hours, ano-ano bang formula ang may standard hours? Bukod sa standard cost, pwede matanong yan sa standard, as uh, a labor rate efficiency. Sa, sa labor efficiency uh, variance. Ibig sabihin, we just have to recall ano bang formula ang mayroong standard hours. Ayan, so the answer here is 90,000 hours. And uh, sabi rito, the number of units produced for the month is, ilang units nga ba ang na-produce natin? Paano ba tayo nakakapag-solve ng total standard hours? If you remember, that should be the standard hours per unit. Mumultiply natin ng actual output. Okay. So, kapag may ganyan tayo, so standard hours per unit po ay, ano ba standard hours per unit? Ay, you know, 45 minutes to manufacture. Ibig sabihin, that would be 45 over 60. Eh, ito ang tinatanong, yung actual na units. May standard hours ka? 90,000. Okay, kaya alam mo pala, ang actual mo is simply, ang actual units mo ay simply 90,000. Divided by 45 over 60 to make it consistent. 90,000 hours to it. So the answer is 120,000 units. Okay. Ang labor efficiency variance naman ang tinatanong. So LEV. So difference in hours times your standard rate. Ano ba yung actual hours natin? At standard hours natin. Standard hours, meron na tayo 90,000. Actual hours, meron pa tayo? Walang binigay. Pero remember, ang actual labor cost ay actual hours times the actual rate. May actual rate na 36. May actual hours na tinatanong. And that is equal to 3690. So you can get your actual hours here na 102,000. 500. Okay? 
So, difference in hours would be 12,500. Mumultiply natin ang standard rate. Ano standard rate natin? 30 pesos. So, that would be 375,000. So, again, sabi ko nga, tama yung 375 mo. Pero is it F or U? Mas malaki yung actual. So, ito ay unfavorable. Oops, sorry. Ito ay unfavorable. Any questions so far? Wala. Sorry, nagdiretso. Kaya yeah, balik tayo. So this is 375,000. Malaki yung actual. So this is unfavorable. So 375,000 unfavorable. Okay. Labor efficiency variance. We will now move to the next problem. Uh, may kinalaman po sa labor rate variance. So, labor rate variance, again, a formula. Difference in R times C, actual hours. Okay, so kung ano yung actual rate natin, standard rate natin, actual rate ay, ayun, 6.1, standard rate ay 6. So, ang difference natin sa rate ay 0.10. Anong actual hours natin? Walang nakabigay. Pero, actual hours to, may kinalaman sa efficiency. Kaya, we can make use of the labor efficiency variance. Sabi dito, ito ay 600 na unfavorable. So, meaning... Kung ito ay difference in hours times the standard rate, kung unfavorable to actual hours minus standard hours tayo. Para positive pa rin. Okay? Times the standard rate natin and that is equal to 600. Ano ba yung actual hours natin? Yun po yung nawawala. So actual hours minus any standard hours natin. May binigay dito na 1,500. Okay? Multiply natin ang standard rate natin na 6 and that is equal to 600. So, ilipat ko yung 6, 100. So, actual hours is equal to 1,600 hours. Okay? So, alam mo na to, substitute na natin dito. So, times 1,600, the answer is 116. Is it F or U? A and S, malaki yung actual. So, that is unfavorable. So, 160 unfavorable. Okay. So, question so far. Before I proceed with the last part sa overhead, <clears throat> mukhang wala so far. So, I'll just continue. One, sa overhead variance analysis natin. So, I hope you can still remember yung ating actual Ba, bash, and applied. Ano nga uli yung actual? Actually, is actual, more on given lang to. Unless, ito mismo yung tinatanong. But in the exams, normally, ipapakita magkano yung actual FOH, fixed overhead, and actual VOH. Okay. <clears throat> and then, yung ba naman, ibig sabihin, budget allowed based on actual hours. Ito po yung actual ba, bash, applied. Then, bash natin is based on standard hours na budget. And then, ang applied natin is actually the standard. Standard fixed overhead and standard na variable overhead. Kung makikita nyo po, gusto ko lang ihiwalay yung fix na sa itaas, yung variable na sa ilalim. Kasi, yung mga variances natin, pag may nakita kang magkaiba, that, mean, uh, that means na may variance talaga. So, ang formulas natin would be easy to establish. Tingnan po ah, ang actual lang ang talagang binigay sa exam unless ito nga yung tanong. Pero yung BAA, BASH, applied natin, tingnan po mga formula. Lahat, oops, mali ito. Ito, lahat ay gumagamit ng rate. Ito po standard hours. Lahat ay gumagamit ng rate. FOH rate, FOH rate, FOH rate. VOH rate, VOH rate. So, pare-parehas po na may rate na ginagamit, gumagamit ng standard rate ng BAA, BASH, and applied. If you remember kanina, kasi ito ay budget. Ito ay standard. Sabi natin, budget is more on total. Standard is more on per unit. Pero, pag ang standard na pinag-uusapan, 
itong standard hours dito, standard hours natin is nakabase sa actual output. Okay? Times natin ang standard hours per unit. Pero yung nandito po is based on the planned level of activity. Ito po yung normal capacity natin. Okay? So, kapag tinanong sa exam, kailangan mo ma-establish yung ba ah, hindi mo maalala yung formula, always start with the rate. Kung fixed component man yan or variable component. And then just think later on, ano ba yung imumultiply ko? Okay? So, balik tayo dito. Kung makikita po natin, medyo nasulatan ko na ng todo, linisin ko lang ng bagya. Okay? Para lang makita nyo po yung formula. Si ba ah, sabi natin, based on the planned level of activity, the fix is multiplied to the normal capacity. Ang normal capacity is also your theor uh, theoretical or practical capacity. Meron kasi tayong maximum capacity. For example, 100,000 units ang kaya nating i-produce ma the maximum. Pero ang normal capacity natin, we just produce 80,000. So naka, dun po magbe-base yung ating uh, fix overhead dito. And we call this part na budgeted fix overhead. Sometimes ang tanong lang sa exam, how much is the budgeted fix overhead? Simply multiply the fix overhead rate na standard times the normal capacity. Kung mapapansin nyo po, magkamukha lang silang dalawa. Okay? Saan ang pinagkaiba nila? Ba, a, bash. Actual hours, standard hours, and the portion ng variable. Pero magkamukha, magkamukha, saan ay ba, a, and bash except for itong part na to. Okay? So, yung bash and applied, parehas na almost standard, pero, pero ano pinagkamukha? Yung fixed component. Normal capacity to, pero ito ay standard hours. Pero yung variable component, standard parehas yan. Kaya pag magkamukha, walang variance. So, paano ba gamitin yung diagram na to? Okay? I'll go to this one. One-way overhead variance analysis. Pag tinanong ang one-way overhead variance analysis, dulo to dulo lang ang comparison yan. Okay? Just compare the actual and, and the applied. Ang applied naman, hanapin mo lang yung rate natin sa exam or i-compute natin yung rate na to. I-multiply natin sa standard hours. Wait lang. Malulobat ako. So, ano lang? Uh, one minute lang. Ay, one minute lang. Kailangan ka lang. Okay, going back. Ayan. So again, pag total overhead variance or one-way variance overhead variance analysis, dulo to dulo. Just have to compute for actual and your applied. Ano yung gawin natin? Kung nakalimutan si applied, start with the rate. So remember, kung applied, standard tayo, SH, SH tayo. Again, saan galing SH? Nuulit-ulit ko po to kasi palaging hinahanap to. So, ang SH natin ay actual actual units multiply natin ng standard hours per unit. Okay? Lagi nakabase sa actual. Ayan. So, pag one-way, madali lang. So, pag two-way po tayo, we just have to group. Alin ba dito ang controllable and non-controllable? non-controllable. Okay? So, tingnan natin, alin, alin sa mga actual, baa, bash natin, ang controllable and non-controllable. Pag sinabi natin controllable, the management has influence on this one. Actual FOH and VOH, pwede naman talaga natin makontrol. Pag may makokontrol ka, kahit isang piraso lang dito sa actual natin, controllable na siya. Baa, can we control the FOH rate? Pag sinabi, pwede ba natin baguhin ngayong period yung FOH rate? This is standard. The answer is no. Tulad na sabi natin, during the period of evaluation, hindi mo pwede baguhin ang standard. Pero, after the period, pwede mong i-evaluate kung dapat bang baguhin yung standard mo. But not 
during the period. Controllable? No. Normal capacity, controllable ba to? The answer is no. Pero in the short run, no. Pero in the long run, pwede mo po itong makontrol. For example, 100,000 units nga yung capacity mo. Eh gusto mong gawin 200,000 units. Pwede naman, bili ka lang ng bagong equipment. Mag-expand ka lang. Pero that is not being decided in the short run. Kaya nga ito, generally, non-controllable at this time. VOH rate is also standard. So, hindi pwede. Pero yung actual hours can be controlled. So, hindi dito ang hati. Ang BASH, FOH rate, hindi controllable. Ay, ba't ito nakacheck? Okay. So, ang uh, normal capacity, sabi natin kanina, hindi controllable. VOH rate, hindi controllable. SH, hindi controllable. Lahat pala hindi na controllable. Kaya dyan ang hati natin. Ayan. So, sa lahat sa applied, hindi na rin controllable. Kaya naman, ito yung tinatawag natin na controllable na overhead variance. Dito yung non-controllable. Pag tinalong sa exam, magkano ang controllable na variance? I have to compute for actual and bash. Paano gagawin ko? Eh, hanapin ko yung actual na given na to. At dito, anong formula? I'll start with the rate. And then, I'll just think, ano mumultiply ko? Eh, budget yan. Normal capacity sa fix. Eh, bash. Standard hours sa variable. Okay? Pag tinanong ay non-controllable, eh, compare ko, bash versus applied. Okay? Sir, wala pong variable overhead rate. Walang problema. Remember, pag wala yung variable, magkamukha yan. I-add mo dito sa bash, i-add mo rin sa applied. Compare mo na lang yung fixed na uh, component. Okay, and by the way, ang ibang tawag natin sa controllable ay budget variance. Bakit naging budget variance? Kasi we are comparing actual and your budget. Ito naman non-controllable. Bakit ba non-controllable? I mean, ang ibang tawag ay volume variance rather. Bakit naging volume variance? Kasi tingnan mo, itong SH na to, tulad ng paulit-ulit ko sinasabi kanina, based on the actual units. Pero yung normal capacity is based on the plan or yung practical capacity nga ng, ng, ng production. All the rest equal. So, ibig sabihin, it is just the volume. Yung actual na lumabas that makes it different from the bash. Kaya tinawag siyang volume variance. Okay, kaya ito ay volume, either budget or controllable, or volume or non-controllable variance. Okay, that's two-way. At ang pinakamakakatulong sa atin lahat ay yung three-way. In just one diagram, kailangan yung four-way maintindihan na natin. So, dito sa two-way, alam nilang controllable at non-controllable. But ang tandaan lang, pag controllable, actual and bash. Non-controllable, bash and applied. Pag total, pag one-way naman, walang problema. Dulo to dulo. Paano kapag three-way? Hatiin mo na siya isa-isa. Ito, yan. Okay? Tingnan po, ah. Actual and ba, ah. Bakit ba nagkaroon ng difference? It's just because of your spending. Okay? Ang ba and bash, magkamuka, magkamuka. Oops. Oops. AH and SH, pag may problema tayo with the number of hours, ang tawag natin dyan ay efficiency variance. So, overhead efficiency variance. Itong kabila naman, ang magkaiba lang ay normal capacity at saka standard hours. Eh, same hati lang naman. Huwag mo nang bigyan ng ibang pangalan. Volume, variance pa rin yan. Tandaan, S, E, V. Nag-iisang vowel sa gitna. Tinanong sa exam, how much is your uh, volume variance? SEV, nasa kanan, V. So, I'll compare my bash and apply. Eh, lumabas sa exam, spending, SEV, nasa kaliwa. So, I'll compare my actual and ba. Eh, may tanong na efficiency. Alam mo na sa kita siya, SEV, actual ba, bash apply. Ba and bash ang i-compare ko. So, that's how we use this diagram. So, si SEV yung pinaka mag-guide sa akin. Pero tandaan no, si S at saka si E, pinagsama, pag pinagsama mo yan, budget variance ang magiging sagot natin. Okay, so that's three-way. So now, let's move to four-way. Four-way, kamukha ng hati ng three-way. S, E, V pa din. 
Pero tingnan mabuti. Hinlimay lang natin into fixed and variable component. Pag magkaiba, may fixed or variable na variance tayo. Actual FOH, FOH rate times NC or the budgeted FOH. Magkamukha ba yung fixed component? Hindi. Kaya meron tayong fixed spending variance. Tingnan nyo variable, magkamukha ba yung actual VOH and VOH rate times AH? Definitely hindi. Ito ay given, ito ay may formula. So, ibig sabihin, magkaiba, meron tayong variable spending variance. Okay? Tingnan po yung fixed component ng ba at saka ng bash. Magkamukha ba yung fix? Magkamukhang magkamukha. So, walang fixed efficiency. Yung variable component natin, magkamukha ba? Iba yung AH o saka SH. So, meron tayong variable efficiency variance. Diyan lang po nang galing yun. And lastly, tingnan po yung fixed component. Magkamukha ba yung dalawa na to? The answer is no. NC and SH po. So, meron tayong fixed volume variance. Magkamukha ba yung variable component? Times SH. Times SH. Magkamukha, magkamukha. So, wala tayong variable volume variance. At saka apat na to. Yung word before, uh, yung number before the word way will tell you kung ilan yung variance natin. So in this four-way variance, pinakita lang, break down lang yung three-way into variable and fixed component. But then again, dito, merong zero. Yung fixed efficiency. Kasi iisa lang yun. Dito naman yung variable, zero din. Okay? So that's your one-way, two-way, four, three-way, four-way overhead variance analysis. Ang pinaka-clue natin dyan, yung SEV natin. So nagtanong sa exam, ano ang variable efficiency variance? Alam mo pa rin na efficiency ay nandun. So alam mo na nasa gitna. So BAA and BASH. Tapos variable component nga lang kasi variable efficiency. Tinanong ay... Uh, variable spending variance. So, I'll compare ma spending pa rin yun sa pinakakaliwa, actual and ba. Ah. So, I'll compare actual and ba, ah, pero yung variable component lang. So, ito po yung pinakadiagram talaga na uh, kung maraming overhead variances na tanong, pwedeng makatulong sa inyo. Okay. At this point, gusto nating makasiguro kung talaga nagkaintindihan. So, i-close ko muna to. Tanggalin ko muna ito. Ayan. So, I would like to call on sino kaya? Darwin, ikaw na. Darwin? Sir. Ayan. Sasabihin ko sa iyo yung tinatanong sa exam and then you tell me kung anong dapat compare. Okay? So, ewan ko lang kung na screenshot mo. Hindi mo naman ako dadayain, di ba? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, tinanong sa exam, volume variance. Volume variance. Ano pong gagamitin na ano? Ano yung compare mo sa actual ba abash and applied? Two-way. Kahit na mag two-way, three-way, basta actually yung mga one-way, two-way, three-way, four-way, Uh, sinasabi lang kung ilan yung paghati mo Pero regardless kung anong way ang gagamitin You just have to know Ano ang i-compare natin kay actual, BAA, BASH, and applied So volume variance ang tanong So what do we compare? <clears throat> volume variance Actual BAA Yung ba? SEV Kabalik tara na sa kabilang dulo siya So, SEV, pag S, actual and ba. Ah, pag efficiency, ba and bash. Kapag volume, uh, bash and applied ang dapat mo i-compare. Ah, bash applied. Yes, ang kabilang side. Okay. How about variable spending variance? So, what do you compare? Actual. Applied. Actual bash applied. Dalawa lang ang pipiliin natin. So let's go back sa, sa diagram. Okay. Sige Darwin, ako muna. Okay, ayan. 
Tinanong sa exam, di ba ito pinakapalatandaan natin? S E V Spending, Efficiency, and Volume Variance Pag tinanong sa exam ay Volume Variance Nasa pinakakanan I'll compare, ba, and apply Okay? So, eh, tapos ang tinanong natin sa exam ngayon ay Variable Spending Variance Iba yung sabi ko sa'yo Variable Spending Spending pa rin yan So, actual and ba Pero variable component lang Actual and ba siya. Okay? Sige, try natin sa iba. Si ano naman? Bea. Ikaw naman, Bea. Hello, sir. Ayan. So, tatanggalin ko muna to syempre. <laughs> Ayan. So, Bea? Oh. Tinanong sa exam? Non-controllable overhead variance. Pag non-controllable po yung bash and applied. Okay, kasi siya rin si volume, no? Apo. Eh, tinanong yung variable efficiency variance. Variable efficiency. Ba and bash po? Yes, pero variable component lang. Apo. Okay, okay. Eh, tinanong sa exam, budget variance. Budget variance. Actual hanggang bash po. Yung actual ba and bash. Hindi mo na isasama si ba As in, si actual lang mismo yung kukunin mo at sa si bash lang mismo pag budget variance ang tinatanong. Ah, okay. So, hindi natin isasama sa computation si ba So, compare actual and bash. Okay. Po. Okay. Eh, tinatanong ay fix efficiency variance. Fix efficiency variance. Wala, sir. Kasi di ba po, parang pareho. Same po sila okay. ng... So, the answer is zero. Okay. Sige, thank you, Bea. So, balik tayo dito. Sometimes in the exam, hindi natin compute yung actual ba bash and applied. Pero, ang binigay sa iyo ay mga variances. Kaya, titingnan natin dito. Pag tinanong ang budget variance, you can simply add the spending plus efficiency variance. Kapag walang, di ba dapat pag budget variance, actual and bash ang i-compare natin. Pero wala nga eh, kaya spending and efficiency variance na lang yung i-add natin. Pag tinanong ang total overhead variance, pwede mong i-add yung budget plus volume variance. Same lang din siya. Wala kasing actual at saka applied na, applied na makocompute. Kaya simply add that. Sometimes sinatanong efficiency variance, walang ba and bash. Ang pwede mong gawin, kung alam mo yung budget variance mo, ima-minus mo yung sp spending variance mo, you will get your efficiency variance. Okay? Nawawala si volume variance. Ang pwede mong gawin, aside from comparing ba and apply, bash and applied, para makuha yung volume variance natin. Eh kaso kung hindi compute ang pwede mong gawin, total overhead variance minus the budget, makukuha mo si volume. Eh wala din budget. S and E lang. So total overhead variance minus the spending minus efficiency, you can get the volume variance. Okay, so ibig sabihin, napakaraming pwedeng laruin dito sa diagram na yan. Okay. So, we will now compute this last problem for today. Last na to. And then, yung iba, ipahinga muna baka information overload. So, we will just uh, answer on Friday kasama ng absorption versus variable. Okay. Sige. So, problem 6. Medyo mahaba, mahaba yung problem. Pero ang mga tinatanong dito ay ito. Materials price variance, materials usage, labor rate. Actually, lahat na ng variances tinanong na dito sa problem number 6. Okay. So, ito rin po yung problem na yun. Let's just compute for materials price variance. Okay. Hindi muna natin binasa yung problem, basta we just get what we need. Materials price variance is the difference in your price times your actual quantity. Hanapin ang actual price, hanapin ang standard price. So, standard price normally nakaganitong format. So, ang standard price natin ay for material 6. Anong actual price natin? 
Okay? So, normally, naghahanap lang ako dito. I, I just scan the problem and look for what I need. Dito ko nakita, it was purchased at 5.80 per pound. So, 5.80. So, ang difference natin sa price ay 0.20. Multiply ko ng actual quantity. The question is, ano actual quantity itong gagamitin natin? Is it purchased or used? Sometimes, kung walang purchase, use automatic na yun. Pero kung may purchase at use, ano gagamitin natin dito? Sabi natin, at the, kung walang sinabi sa exam, kung at the time of purchase or at the time of issuance, we will use at the time of purchase. So, actual quantity, purchase po ang gagamitin natin and that is 415,000. So, what would be your answer sa materials price variance? So, multiply natin ng... 415,000. So, that is 83,000 na FRU. Mas mababa ang A, ang actual. So, that would be favorable. Okay? So, that's for number one. Number two, tinatanong ang materials, usage variant or quantity variance. Pwede din. Difference in quantity times or standard price. Hanapin ang actual quantity, hanapin ang standard quantity, and uh, ano ba ang actual quantity natin? Hanapin ang actual quantity. Is it used or purchased? It should be used. So sabi rito, walang actual, mukhang walang actual quantity used na binigay. Pero sabi rito, there were 16,400 pounds at the beginning, yung materials natin. And there was no ending inventory. So therefore, beginning plus purchases minus ending is your use. Eh, wala namang ending. So, beginning plus purchases lang. Beginning na 16,400 plus 415,000. So, ang actual quantity mo ay 431,400. How do we get the standard quantity? Remember, pag standard quantity, always start with your actual output. Ano ba actual output natin? Production of sub-assemblies total 75,000 units. So that would be uh, 75,000. Multiply natin ng ano ba standard quantity per unit ng materials? 6 times 6. So therefore, ito ay 450,000. So the difference in our quantity is how much? Uh, 18,600 units. Multiply natin ng standard price. Standard price ay... Standard price of materials ay 6 pesos. So therefore, ang answer natin ay 111,600. Is it F or U? Mas mababa ang actual. Therefore, ito ay favorable as well. Okay? So that would be your materials usage variance. Tinanong sa exam, total materials variance. You just have to add the 2. 83 plus 111,600. That would be 194,600 favorable na variance. Okay? So, do we investigate the variance? If this is material based on the judgment, based on the criteria na sinet ng management, you are going to investigate this one. Pero kung sa tingin nyo, ito ay immaterial, you will not invest your time investigating this variance. Okay. Number two. We, uh, three and four, we are asked for the labor rate and labor efficiency variance. Same problem. So, again, labor rate variance normally class kapag uh, ang, ang problem ay mahaba. Parang halos ibinibigay na yung kailangan natin, uh, kailangan natin sa formula natin or sa solution natin. Minsan nga, mas mahirap pa yung sobrang iksi ng problem na parang lahat ng kailangan gawin sa problem, eh ikaw na yung mag-iisip. Ito ibinibigay na lahat kapag mahaba. Kaya huwag ma-overwhelm kapag mahaba yung problem. You just have to get what you need. Labor rate variance. Difference in rate times your standard hours. Actual rate and standard rate. Ano ang actual rate natin? Standard rate, kita agad dito. So direct labor, that would be 12. Actual rate. Hanapin natin sa problem. Makikita mo naman. Oops, ito. The company used... 200,000 direct labor hours at a total cost of 2,560. Walang actual rate na binigay but you can always compute. So, 2,560 divided by 200,000. 
So the answer is 12.8 per hour. So that is our actual rate. So on difference ay 0.80. Multiply natin ng standard hours. Ano ba standard hours natin? Kanina yung standard quantity ng materials, hinanap ang actual output. Ganun, output. Ganun din yung kailangan natin. So that would be 75,000 na output natin times ilang labor hours? 3. So therefore, 200 25 Ay, may mali po tayo This is wrong Oops, na, na ano, walang uh, Wala malang, sir Meron po akong may mali pong nilagay So, <laughs> ito po ay Actual hours na dala lang Okay, so sinunod ko yung sarili ko ng standard hours pero sabi ko parang may mali So, hindi po standard hours na gamit natin Actual hours So, ang actual hours natin ay 200,000. Ayan. Pag may nakikita po kayo na parang may mali na ginagawa, sir, please let me know. Okay? Para hindi magtagal, uh, makorek agad natin. Okay? So, this is 160,000. F or U. Mas malaki yung actual natin. So, this is unfavorable. Okay? Number four. We're, we will compute for the labor efficiency variance. Difference in your hours multiply ng standard rate. Ayan. So, ang actual hours natin yung standard hours, dito ko palang hahanapin yung standard hours. Ang actual hours natin ay 200,000. Meron na tayo yan. Ang standard hours natin, eto po. 75,000 times 3 hours per unit. So, that would be 225,000. Okay, 225,000. So, ang difference niya ay 25,000. Imumultiply natin ang standard rate na 12. So, the answer is 300,000. Is it F or U? Actual hours ay mas mababa. So, ito ay favorable. Okay? Pag tinanong lang sa exam yung total labor variance, so what would be your answer? Pag samahin lang labor rate at labor efficiency. So, that would be 140,000 na favorable. But then again, hindi masyadong pinofocus sa management account yung total labor variance. Ang pinofocus natin ay itong dalawang naka-breakdown. Kasi mas ma-address mo yung problema kapag naka-breakdown yung variance natin into labor rate or labor efficiency. Is it because of the rate or is it because of the number of hours na nagkaroon ng difference ng ating actual and expectation? Okay. So number 5 po tayo. Overhead na po tayo. Ayan. So, huwag babalikan yung diagram na pinakita kanina and we will just try to recall anong kailangan natin. So, variable overhead spending variance is spending S, SEV. So, we will compare your actual and your BAA kasi spending. Pero anong kailangan natin sa actual? Actual na, eh, kasi variable daw po. Oh. So, actual na VOH ang kailangan mo. For your ba, anong gagawin natin dito? Kung makalimutan na ano nilalagay, always start with the rate. Yung variable component eh. So, multiply natin ng ba. So, ito ay multiply ng pH. Okay? So, anong actual VOH natin? Hanapin lang sa exam. So, actual VOH, there are uh, 2,170,000. Okay? VOH rate. Dito again sa table ng mga standard titignan. VOH rate ay 10. Okay? Anong actual hours natin? Hanapin lang sa problem, ayun ang actual hours natin, 200,000. Okay? So therefore, ang baan natin na variable component ay 2 million. Ganyan po yung paggamit ng diagram natin kanina para ma-recall natin. So 170,000 is it F or U? Hindi natin nasabi kanina, pag ang kaliwa or actual ay mas malaki, ganun din po, unfavorable po ang ating variance. So, ito po ay number 5, variable spending variance. Okay? Number 6, ang hinahanap ay variable efficiency variance. Efficiency, SEV, nasa gitna. So, I will compare my ba and bash. Variable po. So, start code ng VOH rate. Ito rin, start ko ng VOH rate. Parehas naman kasi. Eh, lahat maliba sa actual, start with the rate. Okay, right now sinusulat ko yung formula pero when the time comes na memorize na memorize nyo na 
it doesn't uh, necessarily mean na dapat isulat niya. Okay? So, VOH rate times your actual hours here and times your standard hours here. Okay? Baa and bash. Eh, ito po yun. Di ba yung sa baa? So, that would be 10 times 200,000 actual hours. So, 2 million po ang ating baa variable component. How about the bash? 10,000 at uh, 10 ulit ang VOH rate times. Anong standard hours natin? So, ang standard hours natin kanina, that would be 75,000 units. Produce, eto po. Multiply natin ng 3 hours. So, 225,000. So, that is 225. Therefore, ito ay 2 million, 250,000. Therefore, ang ating variable efficiency variance ay 250,000. Paano ang F or U? Mas maliit yun na sa kaliwa, so ito ay favorable. Maliit po kasi yung actual, yung actual, sa actual hours. Okay, so that's for numbers 5 and 6. Variable spending and variable efficiency variance. So at the start, please always try to write the formula. Pero pag master nyo na, no need to write the formula. Okay, so uh, fixed overhead spending variance. Fixed spending variance. S pa rin yan. So, ba actual and ba pa rin yung gagamitin natin. Spending pa rin eh. SEV. So, ano nga lang sa actual FOH? Ito naman ay FOH rate. Ano yung multiply natin? ba Tapos fix to. Multiply natin. Hindi AH kundi normal capacity. Remember, basta budget at fix sa pinag-uusapan, normal capacity ang multiply natin. Actual FOH ay, hanapin sa exam, eto, 1,413,000. Ano ang FOH rate? Dito uli sa data ng standard. FOH rate, ayun, 6. Okay? Anong normal capacity natin? Sa exam, binasa natin, sabi rito, the gold plants practical activity is 80,000 per unit. So, that's another term or another way of saying the normal capacity. Kung mapapansin mo, units to, eh lahat po rito sa computation natin ay naka-express in terms of hours. And multiply natin to with the number of hours per unit, which is 3. So, this is 240,000. Okay? Ito po. And then after that, multiply na natin. The answer would be 1 million. 440,000. Ayan. So, if we compare now your actual and ba, the answer would be 27,000. Is it favorable or unfavorable? The answer is mas maliit yung actual. So, ito ay favorable. Okay? This is number 7. Number 8. Fix volume variance. Ay, ko compare natin, volume po ito. So, SEV, nasa kanan. So, we will compare BASH and Applied. Remember, ang BASH natin ay a fixed component to FOH rate po diyan. Ito ay <clears throat> FOH rate din ang ating Applied FOH rate. Pero ito, no, ano yung multiply natin sa dalawa? Budget ito. Kaya multiply natin ng normal capacity. Apply standard dito kaya multiply natin ang standard hours. So ang FOH rate natin ay 6 times the normal capacity na 240,000. Actually, ito rin po yun. No? Remember, <coughs> your BA and BASH equal sila yung fixed component. So this is 1,440,000. And this part is 6 times standard hours natin. 225,000 if you remember san galing 75,000 na actual output times 3 hours okay so that would be magkano to 1 million 350,000 therefore ang difference nila is 90,000 is it f or u favorable or unfavorable mas malaki yung nasa kaliwa yung budget kaysa sa standard so therefore ito ay unfavorable Okay, so that's number 7 and 8. Okay, konting-konti na lang. Itong numbers 9 and 10, last na po ito. Controllable overhead variance. I'll solve 
for this one in a long way, but later on, I'll show you the shortcut in controllable, okay? So controllable overhead is also your budget variance. Pag budget, we compare actual and bash. Pero ito, walang sinabi kung fixed or variable, so parehas. So actual na fixed overhead, actual na variable overhead. Ang bash natin, FOH rate at saka VOH rate. Ano mo multiply natin? Pag FOH, normal capacity. Pag VOH, rate, standard hours. Okay. So, ang actual fixed overhead natin ay 1,413,000. Ang actual variable overhead ay 2,170,000. Ang fixed overhead rate natin times normal capacity, dito po natin ilagay. So, that would be 6 Yung fixed overhead rate natin, ang normal capacity natin ay 240,000. If you remember, that is 80,000 natin times 3 hours. Okay? So, that is 1,440,000. Tapos, itong variable component ng bash natin, ano VOH rate natin? Nandito po, 10. Anong uh, normal capacity na, anong uh, standard hours natin? That is 225 so, yung uli galing yun, ito po, 75 times 3 hours. So, that would be, magkano to? 2,250,000. Ayan. For ba, so, total lang po natin to, this is 3,583,000 for your actual. And for your batch, magkano to? 3,690,000. So, to get the budget overhead var variance, so that would be, magkano po yun? Oops, sorry. So that would be the difference on 3690 and 3583. And that is 107,000. Is it F or U? Alin, mas malaki, mas malaki na sa kanan, maliit tong actual. So this is favorable. That is your budget overhead, overhead variance. Again, compare actual and your bash. Another way of computing this one is, di ba remember, ang controllable ay pinagsamang spending plus efficiency. Ang spending nakabreakdown lang kanina sa fix at variable. Itong efficiency natin kanina, variable efficiency lang. Kaya pag pinagsama-sama natin, yung mga sagot natin kanina, so variable spending and variable efficiency na ito po, 170,000 U. 250,000F, sulat lang natin. So, that would be 170,000 unfavorable plus uh, 27,000 tingnan natin ulit. Yeah. 250,000 F, ayan. Tingnan ko lang. 250,000 na favorable, yung variable efficiency natin. Ulitin natin. Okay. Spending and efficiency, that would be fixed spending variance plus variable spending variance plus yung ating variable efficiency variance na nasolve kanina. Ang fixed spending variance natin, hanapin nga natin, nandito po sa 7 and 8. Fixed spending ay 27,000F. So, sulat lang natin, 27,000 favorable. Plus, yung variable spending and variable efficiency, ito yung 170,000 unfavorable plus 250,000 na favorable. Double check lang natin kung tama ba. Yes. Ayan. So the answer is also 107,000 na favorable. So equal lang po dito sa dalawa na yan. Yun yung sinasabi natin na sometimes solvable yung actual and bash so, yun yung gagamitin natin to compute for your budget overhead variance. But sometimes, hindi makocompute ang actual and bash, pero given na yung mga ibang variances, you can, also, you can still compute for this one. Controllable or budget overhead variance. For the total overhead variance, that is simply budget... Ay, bakit nang budget? Budget... That is your budget plus your volume variance. Yung budget mo na 107,000 
na favorable plus may volume variance na tayo kanina yung fixed volume variance tingnan natin sa previous slide ayun 90,000 U plus 90,000 U so that would be equal to 17,000 na favorable okay so that would be the answer in number 10 or what you can do is compute again for actual and compute for applied this time and definitely you'll get the same answer so in our case, whichever is easier for you, whichever you are uh, more comfortable uh, using with yung mga uh, styles or techniques natin. So nasa sa inyo na po kung gagamitin ninyo. Okay? So I think marami na ako masyadong sinabi for today. Kaya itong problem number 7, that would be uh, answered in our next meeting and that would be on Friday.